Good afternoon. How are you doing? The many people there already. Thanks for being present again with me. Today is a whole day of Black History session. Um, and we had this framing of myself for my part to honor Black legacy and Black history walks to the Black History Month in the U.S., but knowing that on each part of the world, in different places, for different reasons and histories, you will have your own dates to celebrate this month. Remembering that for us, it's important to celebrate our culture and history every day of the year. So it's great that we have different dates around the world. So we have many reasons to remember, educate ourselves, and share our stories. Hello, Satan. Elizabeth Lamaca, welcome. Ellen from Stratford, Ontario, Canada. Hey, Gayo, thank you so much. Yes, you were, many of you were with me earlier on the other experiences of the Women of Ashe walk and also the Santa Rita Church where you had an idea, like a sh very little, a small idea, like the snippets of our history that I share uh, in larger, like longer tour, walking tours here in Rio of two hours and a half each, going through these different sites. Now I am like pointing out, going to specific ones. And because also uh, one reason is that this area in the port area, some places where we cross, it can be a little isolated. So diminishing my risks to walk with equipment where in on the streets is my work equipment, I'd rather go to the spots and just walk if it's just short between one side and the other. Hi Esther, hi Carolyn. I'm Kelly Tavares, tour guide in Rio de Janeiro and here on Hey Go, focusing on the Black History Walks. Welcome, I'm from Rio Encantos Agency and it's a great pleasure to be here sharing the stories of Mauer my indigenous and African heritage as well. So yes, what I do is like this place can get a little isolated. And one thing is that never anything happened to me, but when we get really doing the tours, we get so into being present here with you guys, uh, ladies and gentlemen, being so focused on the camera that I kind of uh, sometimes lose the perspective of my surroundings. And in a, in a, especially in a poor country, if you are holding an equipment with a cell phone, a, a gimbal, and uh, you are not aware of your surroundings, you have some risks. But other than that, if you are aware, nothing ever happened to me. And I always, uh, hi, Carolyn, Susan. Hi, Anita and Bill for, for joining. Are you both together from Wilshire? Maybe from Britain. And please let me know, okay, if the sound is good, if the video is good. And in case I move awkwardly, I will try to also be aware of my surroundings. Is that because maybe I need to, I need to be present, okay? And of course, when I come and lead the tours, nothing ever happens to me around here because I'm really aware of what's going on around and I'm engaging with people and it's all fine but it's just to be present, like I say. It's even a meditation uh, rule that I tell people. Don't be afraid, be present. And that's going to improve your, your connection with the local, with, with the place, and with yourself as well. Oh, thank you so much, Satan, for your feedback. Remembering that it's like uh, the sensation here is of 90 Fahrenheit, of 81 centigrade or 28 centigrade with the sensation of 30 Fahrenheit. It's pretty hot today. I'm glad there are a few clouds on the sky. Uh, I have my hat. I already put my sunblock, which I really recommend wearing light clothes, comfortable shoes when you come on a walking tour with me in Brazil, especially during summertime. And one thing that is happening with my, my phone, a friend of mine, an American friend of mine, my sister, from uh, Chicago. She uh, brought me this brand new phone because she knows I've been putting an effort to work on live streams. I'm really loving to do that. It's a big pleasure for me to be here, sharing my story, my history. It's 
spreading the word about our network. She brought me this brand new phone and I'm very excited. But the thing is, I don't know if it was really um, uh, produced to be um, part of a uh, like used mostly in the North American countries or colder countries. But fact is when it gets very hot, it's starting to, to freeze, to kind of, to get it, to get, have glitches. So I had that problem in the previous tour. Yes, yes, I bought it because of the camera to offer you the best images I could, but in case it heats up so much, then I can, it can turn out to that I will think I will be leading a tour to you, but you actually won't be seeing me. So I appreciate it if you can say, hey, Kelly, I can't hear or I can't see because maybe it's going to be the heat. But let's see. I hope the sun stays there hidden. Hi, Cynthia. Thanks for joining. Thanks, Shayla. We are about to start in about three minutes. And our tour today is going to be on the UNESCO World Heritage Site, which is on my back. And we will be talking about the different African people who were kidnapped from different countries of, in Africa and brought to Brazil. Being Brazil, like the last country to abolish slavery. And today uh, we remember in the San Igreja, the church Santa Rita, the black poppy symbol, this one, to remember all of those who fought, the soldiers and warriors who fought from the black heritage and black ancestry on the wars and the historic wars throughout our history. So Caroline said, you have a friend coming to Brazil in a couple of weeks. Do you have a website that he can contact you if he wants? Yes, I do. Thank you. He is interested in African history and loves local food. Cool. Good. Very nice. So please ask him to contact me and follow me on my social media at Rio Encantos. R-I-O-E-N-C-A-N-T-O-S. Rio of Rio de Janeiro and Cantos. Okay. Hi, Sally Wash. Hi, Iris. Thanks for coming back. Hi, Nova. Welcome. Welcome here. And also on my profile, please feel free to follow me there. There's going to be other links with some of my research on Black history, some of the places that I was able to travel, like to Britain, to L.A., uh, to Los Angeles, to California, San Francisco, in order to connect with Black history, museums, guides, institutions. He, these are the true masters of our own network of tour guides spread around Brazil, the world, and in Rio. These are the true masters who have been uh, sharing with me and I've been sharing with them and we've been learning and supporting each other together throughout this route. Luz from California, Joey, thank you. You're welcome to the Black History. Hey, Joey. You're welcome to the Black History celebrations of this legacy. I know it's Black History time in the U.S. and we are now officially starting one of our most important tours of this series. We have led these tours in November because November is the Black History Month in Brazil. Being the 20th of November, the Black History Awareness Day in Brazil of Afro-Brazilian culture. Now, because it's the celebration of Black History Month in the U.S., we are doing other sessions to reconnect with that story. And I'd like to hear from you. Where are you from? And when is Black History Month in your country? Also, please, if you don't remember, feel free to research that, okay? And feel free to also send me a message on any of my social media. I'm present in YouTube, Facebook, at Rio Encantos Experiences. Spokane, Washington. Nice, Susan. So I would love to receive people from places and diverse places such as you. And please invite friends from other countries as well. And uh, feel free to miss, ask your requests. For those of you who are new here on the platform, 
small state in New Hampshire, USA. For those of you who are new in the platform, I'm going to ask you one favor. Spread the word about these. Uh, use the app wisely. And notice that there are a few cool resources in the new app of Hago. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I put my widescreen, I don't really see uh, uh, like the buttons that you can use and that are really useful. And some of them are the map where you can click on and have an idea in Rio de Janeiro where you find the black neighborhood historically established because of the largest slave market in the Americas in the modern slavery era. Homer from Alaska, Nina from Ottawa, Canada, Iris from North Carolina, thanks for being back again and sticking with me. Hey, Barbara, welcome back. Also from South Carolina is here with such a black, uh, an important black history representation that is present in Canada and in North Carolina and Chicago. It's a great pleasure to host you all here, brothers and sisters interested in our legacies and our, how our people connect either from the side of the colonizer who invested on the enterprise, selling people's souls, and either from the perspective of locals and either from the perspectives of black people, indigenous people in your place, and either from the perspective of those who were kidnapped and taken out of their motherland to arrive exactly on this site that I'm sharing now with you. Glad to see you again, Joy. Will and Jonathan, welcome to join the UNESCO tour for the World Heritage Site. We will have about 28 minutes now, 25 minutes of this tour, where I'm going to show you some and talk to you about some of these spots. So please, I've been doing this route in walking tours around here since 2013. And I'm very welcome to answer any questions that you might have. Don't feel embarrassed if I don't know the answer. I will just research more, okay? Uh, easy questions, simple questions, no questions are stupid and all of them helps to build up and help us get rid of, get rid of our, a little bit of our ignorance. So let's go together in this walk through building up knowledge to, together for freedom. Freedom walkers, first I'd like to point out a few places before we start to develop. So that tree right there is a baobab tree, which was planted right there. The question is, why was it one of a kind here and planted right there? So I will start with the questions. Yes, and I will build up over your interest so I can keep following your interests and keep you engaged. That's what it's all about. Don't wanna be boring, just speaking alone and just, you know, tiring you out. I want you to stick with me and stay together. That tall skyscraper there, Jonathan Will, who joined in a few seconds, is a brand new building built three years ago by L'Oreal and follows a trend of international companies from all over Europe and also later from the U.S. to spread their warehouses and the manufacturers, the manufacturers here in the same port area where they were either involved in the past with the slave trade market or with the coffee plantations market. And now with L'Oreal, for example, taking care of your and our people's hairs and, and um, beauty. Well, but now, uh, irony of the dustin of fate, I would say L'Oreal, which is a company dedicated to women, is right on the other side, opposite corner, of this green uh, building here is under the shade now, under these trees, which is the maternity called Pro Matri. And Pro Matri is the maternity where I myself was born. And many of the tour guides who are living in this area, many of the Cariocas, people who were born in Rio, were born. It's a public hospital and maternity, which now is abandoned despite of the needs that our local people have to have a nice and cool maternity. Now, the question is, don't you think that L'Oreal would benefit a lot if they connected with the Department of Development Department to do some social work 
and work in a partnership with the local government who wants to gentrify the area, but to unite, rebuild, and uh, create benefits to the mothers in the region of the port area, reestablishing that maternity. Do you think that would be very difficult or very expensive? I don't know, it's just something to bring up. Now, do you see this amazing building here? Do you recognize this style of architecture? From this building, I can share the history of a famous engineer and architect and scientist who lived here and who was an abolitionist. Hi, Fairly. Hi, Jonathan B. Thanks for coming back to the screening. Here, uh, the internet is showing a lower uh, rate transmission, so I don't know if it's pixelating for you. I hope it's not. Uh, but for me, I'm getting a little concerned. So if the image is good, if everything's going all right, uh, my camera, let's see, is, is heating up, but not that much. Okay, thanks, Joey, for letting me know. Oh, I hope so, Satan. We are really looking forward for that. And this building here, which uh, architecture style is this? And why this kind of building would be present here? So these are some stories that I can share if you have interest. Of course, it's such a short tour that I won't be able to contemplate all of these places. But I'm giving you like some tips of the iceberg that I can tap into if you have a specific interest. But this was built and projected by Andre Rebouças, this famous black engineer, built this warehouse in 18, 1871, and he himself traveled to the Docklands of England and London, where he was a correspondent with, and a colleague with other engineers of his time to bring and learn and share his experiences of working to the Brazilian Empire of that time. So there is a whole history around the docks, Dom Pedro II, of Emperor Dom Pedro II, or André Rebouças, the famous engineer. Now, the place you see here, this old factory, uh, underneath it, on the ground floor, where you see everything filled around here, it was built in 1871, when still the, there were enslaved uh, African people as a majority of the labor force here, but André Rebosa was an abolitionist and he launched the manifesto and he hired the black people who were on that time, who were free men, to work on the construction of this factory. And on the grounds of it, and it was much bigger as well, it had other parts here on the side. So when I was born in 1977, this maternity was there and thriving, and uh, but in the 1800s, in the 1700s, all of these that you see filled up was water. There you go. And many Africans were brought from different parts of Africa to this, from this very place where we are now. So you see here one representation of uh, Johann Moritz Rugendas, a print from this German traveler and painter who was traveling here in Brazil as many travelers in the 1800s and who had the duty to go to the colonies and document the lives of black people, of other people in the colonies, in the plantation farms and so on. So thanks to many of these artists, many of them commissioned or travelers that we have a lot of representations either being romanticized or uh, being um, accurately represented depending, depending on the artist and how he was or she was commissioned. Like Maria Graham from Britain also did her contributions here in Brazil, left her contributions in her own critiques and participation. So many of these artists left also a legacy representing a lot of scenes that we would have, even though we need to always remember that art's representation has the romanticized and uh, 
idealistic sometimes that not always represents the truth. But one thing that really resonates here, and I'm going to show these uh, with this part, because all of these around the factory here, hi, Jordana, hi, Tony, was water. So, and many of them were the trapiches or smaller constructions such as these that were located where, for example, that hotel is today. That hotel is from the beginning of the 20th century. It will tell the history of another time in the region where the coffee business was the one generating uh, wealth with exploitation of a new free labor force of black people in the area. But underneath it is the UNESCO World Heritage Site of the Transatlantic Memory, where you see if we compare here, in the past, the slave ships or the tombados, the tomb, tomb ships, because most of the people died in the crossing of the Atlantic Ocean and they were thrown on the sea, in the sea. But when they actually managed to arrive here, despite of the very bad conditions where how they were transported, they were transported into smaller vessels to the trapiches where white people and also other traders can be also black people in the trade. So it's not a, a matter only of black and white, but how these things are managed in a way that in even today, when you think about the capitalistic society and we think it's a matter only of black and white, or there are many shades of gray area that we need to analyze to really see who is on the side of the reparation of the story. But he is represented in the documentation is clearly represented and you can see white people, white men in power, mostly Portuguese people who reestablished more modern slavery, also reestablishing one of the biggest genocides of our history. So this is important to be mentioned. And why I mention that? Because many people still don't acknowledge that part of our history. We don't learn that in schools or not even our institutions of power today represents this properly. And I can give many examples. I can see that many people are joining now. Thanks to Smiley, Kara, and Lynn for joining. So this is representing different people from Africa who were brought here with different languages, with different faith, with different stories. And when coming on these slave ships, tied in boats and chains, laying on the floors without having their excrements collected, without receiving proper food, without receiving, barely receiving water, just enough to survive. They arrived here, they were even taken the, the right of having their own names. They were baptized in the, in the ports where they were kidnapped from in Africa or in the ships. And they were brought here and they gained names that were represented to their masters between brackets because real masters are the ones who left the legacy, such as André Rebouças, such as Mercedes Batista, the abolitionists who really fought for human rights even before the understanding of what human rights were. But because they understood that and the opposite that many Europeans and many people from the church and the scholastic people, philosophers of the 1500s, believed that black people didn't have a soul, nor indigenous people. Therefore, they could be used, traded, sold as animals, as objects, as they arrived here in this area. So behind me, is the archaeologic window that was hidden for 100 years. Thanks, Hans, for joining from Bavaria. I hope you can appreciate our history. And also, I'm going to share with you the UNESCO World Heritage Site for the Transatlantic Slave Trade. Now, please feel free. I know it's a hot time of the day here, the 
2 p.m. This the sun is up high, but feel free to take your postcard of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites for the remembrance and memorial of the transatlantic slave trade in Brazil, a place that was hidden by the Republicans from 1911 until 2011, when the remodelings in the area could bring up this new archaeological window that was really old, remaining from the 17th century, uh, uh, not 17th century, 1700s, until the 1900s at its beginning, what was filled up at the level of the ground where I'm stepping in now and hidden for 100 years in order to hide the story of black history, black legacy, and this particular uh, sad chapter of our history. Thanks, Jen, for, uh, for joining. I hope you had taken your postcard here. If you haven't, just let me know. I can stay five seconds more. The sun is really hot, so I'm going to change a little bit to the shade down there, the shade of that tree, so I can um, keep the, the temperature of the phone controlled and avoid glitches of this overheating and breaking our transmission. It's 2 p.m. here. We will have 12 minutes more of the tour uh, of the UNESCO World Heritage Site. And now I'm going to share some of the rocks where many of my ancestors arrived. So you still can see on these rocks, which were stamped by slave traders from all over the West Indies, East Indians in these companies, from African people from Senegal, Mozambique, Togo, Guinea, Congo, Angola, where they were brought from, and even the rings of chains. You can, uh, some of you, if you were present here, could see better. Are uh, they tied, uh, gripped on the box where they would tie the ropes of the smaller vessels to come and people be unloaded. And why I say unloaded, why I call like that particular chapter of our history and I say that our people were unloaded instead of saying arriving, instead of saying just they arrived here, I would say more than 1 million people, it's estimated around 1 million to 1.5 million people were kidnapped and brought here. So it's not just an arrival. It's a traumatic disembark. This tour, this walking tour is uh, my Little Africa Black History walking tour in Rio de Janeiro. And it's not only about the pain that we suffer and that we still pay for a high price all over the world. It's a, it's a global connection, the slave trade. But it's um, it, that particularly our people and many people in the Americas feel the consequences of this trade until today. Thank you, Sally, so much for your tip and your contribution. They are really important to support our research. And I have a, a goal to continue traveling around Brazil and, uh, and to Africa as well and to the Caribbean where I will want to connect with other guides doing what I do here. Uh, so uh, the money that I raise, I don't put on luxury, I just invest back on my work, on my research and every education needs to be funded and supported. It's just because of you and many people like you and other many projects that I engage on making audio guides, making virtual tours, making live tours, is that I'm able to build up and continue doing my work. Because I decided that I want to be, uh, I wanted to do a, a history, but on the streets to create an impact with people who are travelers, but also with locals. And this tour, it's a moment where we are visiting a sensitive site of memory. So it's more painful, but it's, when you do it like in the actual whole circuit hi Johan thanks for joining thanks Gail again for supporting thank you very appreciated when we do the whole tour you see that it's on its complexion 
we do acknowledge the legacy of the great things that made our people survive, thrive, and despite of uh, still having a lot of our broken ties, broken uh, psychologically, emotionally, we still are able to be, many of us, happy people to make music, to dance, and, uh, and to keep fighting. Because we focus also on this tour, we find a balance like we find in the samba music, like we find in, in our Afro-Brazilian religions, we find a balance between saying what are the good things that made us survive. What, so what are the great things that helps us to survive? Yes, Tony, should be like this, harsh but important to know and remember thanks to the Black History Month in the U.S. that brings up a new opportunity. So many of you who are there, remember that every day is a day to remember the history and change the strats of our society that perpetrates any prejudice because these create harms for all of us and we need to, to stop that. We have about eight minutes more of tour. Why is that no water here anymore? Thanks, Joey. I love questions such as this. Let me just put the gimbal a little bit closer to the floor here. Let me see if I can get uh, a nice... Mm -hmm. composition around here like this, the ground floor. So why there isn't water here anymore as it was here in the past? Hmm? So by the time when this was a slave port, right? And let's remember, don't use just the word slave. We use the slave trade, but nobody is born a slave. People were enslaved, and that makes a big difference because that restitutes our human kind and our human being essence, right? And so as the port was serving just to the slave market or to the market of enslaved African in this complex area, area people were arriving in smaller vessels while the bigger ships stay there on the other side, on my back, where I pointed the camera where the baobab is located. But what happened is this port was, uh, there were different uh, slave ports around the shore here. And one of them, thanks Nina for your contribution. Uh, the other port is the 15th square, was also in the 15th square. And that was the one that started to receive a lot of Africans as well. And it's about 15 minutes walking on my left side here, on the left side of the, the UNESCO World Heritage Site. But while people were arriving in smaller vessels, there wasn't really a need to, uh, to have like, like more grounding, more flooring. But as this port closes, it is closed in 1831, because there was the first legislation of to abolish the uh, to turn the trade illegal, even though it con continued to be done illegally until 1888, if not even a little bit more. So then the 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 role of this port starts to change. It starts the, the so the coffee plantation farms they are happening inside of the interior of Rio de Janeiro, in Espírito Santo, in Minas Gerais, and in Sao Paulo, starting to spread to Sao Paulo and Minas since the plantation farms, the coffee plantation farms in Rio and in the interior of Rio grew, uh, were exhausted, the lands were exhausted. But then the, the labor force will get really expensive because now the traffic is legal, so African people it starts to be valued more, but valued not as people, but valued as commodities. So when that happens, they need to change the configuration and of the port 
because Rio de Janeiro on its geographic area and shore, it's a very undulated shore. It has a, a shore that is a, with many smaller bays. But then if you start to develop warehouses, big warehouses to pack the coffee beans, to trade the goods, to store the goods, to have all the labor force of black people working on that, then they start to establish many red warehouses where uh, they have to do fillings around to make it a last, to make the port here not undulated, to make it more straight. So if you look in the map that you have there on the top of your of your screen in the app, you see that the shore now is more like squared, if I could say that, it's straightened instead of being very undulated, such in a natural beauty, beautiful tropical beach, for example. So thanks, Susan, for your question. Uh, the slave abolition took place in 1888, the last country to abolish slavery in the world. It's a big shame that it still needs to be acknowledged by many of us. Trust me, it's still a big work to be done here also in Brazil to change the mindset of this slave, slavery. Now that big hotel there from 1910 represents the other moment when in 1910 all of these places here, they were already um, filled. This port here was completely filled at that ground floor there, at that level, in 1911. And everything that you see here was hidden and completely covered. But with all the wealth generated in the plantation farms, with the exploitation of coffee and the labor force of African people, first enslaved and later free between brackets because they sold their payments is still today very low our payments. So our life here in Brazil is not easy. Now, seeing on that part is the central train station of Rio. The mountain of Corcovado is more on the back where the Christ Redeemer is located. And I lead tours in the Christ Redeemer in Corcovado as well. So one thing that I'd like to point out for those who are here present is that I've talked in the Cosmic Value Treasures Under the Arms of Christ Redeemer. Before going to the Christ Redeemer, I talked about famous writer, black writer, Machado de Assis. And he was bought, born in this neighborhood here, in the port area, 20 minutes away from the Corcovado, okay, taking an Uber. So he was born in Morro do Livramento. So I wanted to take advantage to, to remember that for those of you who had taken this tour with me. Now I'm going up. We are finishing our tour. And as I said, it went really, really fast. It's a lot of history to tap into, and I will be very happy to continue sharing these stories. One of the things that I really would like from you, from your part, uh, people, is that you uh, please be aware, be mindful of the opportunities that we have to be learning, sharing our stories, and supporting each other in the works we do, okay? Uh, use your app wisely, look the map, enter, please, if you like this experience, follow my profile, there will be different links there. And my agency here is Rio Encantos. It doesn't benefit only myself. I always share my knowledge with other guides. I, like I said, for people who are taking other tours, and many guides who know me, they know that I am a collaborative person because I believe that just uniting, we can make a difference. Same, same problem here, Joy. Same problems, same older problems. So it's important to bring that up, that the struggle continues because our responsibility to take care of that and change this is big. We need to be aware of that. And one thing that I fight for is like we develop a mindset uh, from an European perspective, which is predominantly of we can pay more for the work of an European guide. We can be more interested by European topics or North American topics. And it happens with Brazilians, okay? That we don't value the works many times. Many of us don't value the works of our brothers and sisters. So we need to change that mindset. We need to 
uh, spend more on experiences, on people's work and knowledge and education than in material goods. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Nina. Thanks for your contribution. Here's my maternity from very close. I really love this place. My mom told me that when I was uh, uh, born here, I uh, in that time I I was born in the uh, how do I say that the indigente uh, part is like the part of the very poor people because this is a popular uh, hospital and I was uh, I didn't even have a, a cradle so my grandparents they set up a draw a draw no a drawer to put me there as a baby and on the next month they were able to buy my cradle so look at that how far i went because of education how far i went i was always like dedicated to be studying to connect with other people to support each other so i received support i received your support thank you nova and then i was able to be granted a scholarship but not all of us will have the same chances and we need to give hands and give these chances to other brothers and sisters as well so that's my goal now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now I will leave you with this view of the Baobab tree, which represents the different roots of the African people, which was planted here because all the African people were brought, many of the African people were brought to Brazil exactly where this tree is today. So it was very, very symbolic uh, gesture to plant a tree, which is filled with soul and spirit, don't remove the soul and the spirits of nature. That's a modern thought, scientific thought that it surpasses because all the ancient people of all times, they know and they knew that nature has soul. So please enjoy, take your postcard that will represent legacy and nature and soul for you. Thank you so much. Hola, America. I'm glad. Fort Worth, Texas. Thank you. Loved you too. Thank you so much. Done with love and pleasure, we go further. I look forward to seeing you around. And also, please let me know tonight. Thank you, Joe. I'm sweating. It's very hot. Now at 3 p.m. I will lead a tour with five Americans who will come on an actual walking tour. And a friend of mine who is coming uh, to visit, she said there will be a symphonica orchestra of um, accordions later in front of the municipal theater. So in case, Anita and Bill, thank you so much, in case you want me to, uh, to uh, create an event and show you a little bit of this uh, symphonica orchestra, of accordions that will take place in about four hours of, or five hours later on, I can open up uh, an event, another time slot, to show you a little bit of the music of Brazil. All right? So, but for that, please follow me on uh, Instagram, Rio Encantos, R-I-O-E-N-C-A-N-T-O-S, and say, Kelly, please do the, the Symphonica Orchestra with the accordion, and I will consider, I will highly consider that. Thanks for supporting me. Bye-bye. Big kisses. Ah, I was born here. I lived here until I was six, and I live 20 minutes from here. Oh, Iris, I remember that. Thank you. Bye-bye, Joy. Ah, cool. Thank you so much.